Hi, welcome to Fly Tying Step by Step. Today I will be showing you how to tie the Caddis Emerger pattern that I've posted a few days ago. So to start off I have a size 12 pupa hook with a bluish gunmetal glass bead. So to start things off we're going to make a few ledge wraps just to add a little bit of weight to this pattern. I'm using 0.015 lead wire. So just a few wraps on the bare shank of the hook so that it can slide on the shank. We want to push it in underneath that glass bead. Just position it there and then make a few extra wraps to the bend of the hook. Just want to make sure that the lead wire will fit in under that bead. There we go. With that done, I'm using Unithread 80 in a light olive. And I start my thread behind the lead so that I can secure it. And then I'll just make a few wraps over the lead to keep it in place and I will advance my thread down to the bend of the hook. There I'm going to tie my ribbing material. It is a olive yarn, embroidery yarn. So just Tie that in first. And what I'll do now is just build up a tapered body the lead wraps so that we have a smooth transition onto the lead. You will see that the emerger of the caddis fly has quite a thick middle section and then it tapers down to the head. So I'm just building up my body accordingly. The body of the fly is made with a dabbing that I've blended from a synthetic chartreuse material and then also white rabbit fur that I've dyed a light yellow um, chartreuse kind of color and then also some SLF prism that I've just blended in. So you don't need a thick body because your thread already built the profile. So I'm just going to Okay, thin noodle. And 
and just advance it to the eye of the hook. We're going to stop just short of the bead. Now I'm going to counter wrap my dabbing with the tinsel or embroidery yarn. What about four wraps? And secure that. Now for the legs and the antenna that comes out. Here I've used another synthetic and a darker olive, also with a little bit of the prism SLF flash. What's important is I'm going to do a split thread technique. You can do a dabbing loop. I prefer the split thread technique, seeing that it gives a much thinner, smaller profile to this fly. The 8 oat thread is sometimes a little bit difficult to split. So when you buy a thread, make sure that it can be split, number one, and number two, that it's a good quality thread. Okay, so there I've got it down the middle. What's important here is to put your dabbing with the longer fibers extending to the back of the hook, the bend. The reason for this is we are going to comb it out, but you don't want to create a lot of bulk at the front of the fly. So I'm just putting in a few fibers and I'm making sure that the short end is on one side and the longer on the other. So when you spin it up, you're going to end up with a thinner profile in the front and you can comb or stroke back those fibers to the back. Just make sure that you don't overdress it because we don't need that much. So now I'm just going to tease out the dabbing just to untangle those trapped fibers a bit and now we're going to wrap that around so I'm just pulling those fibers to the back you can see it's very thin so you don't create a lot of bulk at the head of the fly With that in place, I'm just going to catch my thread and just secure it. Now we can comb it out. If you find that your body material is not showing through, you can always break out some of the extra but you want to get that translucency if you can see it on the video if it's too long these fibers you can always just come in with your nails and just pinch them out but this one looks actually great now for the legs i'm going to use a pheasant south african bird And show it to you like that. Very common bird in the bush felt of South Africa. Widely spread throughout most of the country. But any partridge or pheasant should work. 
So preparing my feather, I have trimmed out or pulled off all the fluff and I'm left with a feather like that. Now I'm going to trim it so that I have about four to five fibers on each side of the stem. And you are left with a V shape like that. Now this is where the important part comes in. What I'm going to do is you will see there's a natural curve to this feather. I'm going to push it 90 degrees onto the fly, secure it with my other hand and then tie in one, two wraps and then secure it in front as well. What this does is it pulls those fibers to the bottom so that it gives the illusion of, of legs. So most of the fibers are in line basically with your point of your hook with a few ones standing out to the side. But when it's wet, they will just lie flat as well. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that they tend to push away from the fly and in the water that extra movement just looks awesome. With that done, we can just do the collar, which is just a single strand of peacock hole that we tie in just behind the bead. And just create a neat head to the fly. Easy fly to tie, no fancy things to it, great profile and I believe it will catch many different species of fish in South Africa and also abroad. There you have it, the emerging caddis pattern tied with a translucent body. Thank you for watching Fly Tying Step by Step. Be sure to subscribe to our channel. Also like our Facebook page www.facebook.com forward slash fly tying one two three. Tie the fly, fish it, give us your feedback and enjoy your fly fishing. Bye.